Thank you, Brother Phil. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with verse 12. Um, I think I made a mistake on the announcement a while ago. The zip is 40437. Okay? Thank you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with verse 12. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, I'll say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead raise, rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. Father, I pray that as the word of God goes out, that your spirit would use it to touch hearts and people would respond and receive Christ as their Savior and that your people would be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. If a very small word, but we realize that sometimes it's the difference between life and death. I've heard uh, doctors make this statement, if they live through the night, I think they will survive. And also a statement like this, if we can stop the bleeding, we can get them stabilized. That word, if, is a very small word, but it sure does make a difference. In verse 12, it says, How say some among you? There were skeptics in Paul's day, just like there is now. How say some among you that there's no resurrection of the dead? Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, if we're preaching that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, how say some among you that he didn't? And so that big monster if lifts itself up today in our society, and there are many who do not believe that Jesus rose from the grave. Oh, they believe that he was a good man, that he taught taught some good things, lived a good life, but they do not believe that he is the Son of God. And then in verse 13, Paul said, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. If there is no resurrection after death, then Christ didn't rise from the grave. And so we have to examine these verses to see what God has to say about it. We see if seven times in these verses that a little word if lifts its ugly head seven times and tries to deny it the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In verse 14, the Bible says, If Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Now, that word vain means empty. That means that the message I'm preaching on this Easter service is empty. If Jesus didn't rise from the grave, the preaching of Christ is empty. It's like looking in a candy jar and saying, it's vain, it's empty. 
I've heard people say, your brain or your head is empty. What are they saying? Vain. That word vain means empty. And so, preaching of Jesus Christ, his resurrection, is empty. There's nothing to it if he didn't rise from the grave. If Jesus Christ did not rise from the grave, then I'm a fool. I'm foolish. What I'm preaching is empty. It's vain. There's no life to it. There's nothing to it. Nothing is so foolish as preaching the gospel of a dead Christ. And if there is no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? If there is no resurrection, then is Christ not risen? And everybody who believes in Jesus Christ would be foolish. Your faith also is vain. Isn't that something? If Jesus didn't rise from the grave, if he wasn't resurrected, my preaching is empty. It's vain. It's foolish. Not only that, my faith is vain. Your faith is vain. Why well, it's foolish to believe in a Christ that just died, and where did he go? If death was the end of it, and he wasn't resurrected, preaching is vain, faith is vain, everything is vain, it's foolish, it's empty, there's nothing to it. And then in verse 15 it says, we're found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, is so be that the dead rise not. False witnesses. I'm standing in the pulpit at this moment in time and bearing false witness. I'm telling a lie. If I'm saying that there is a resurrection and that Christ rose from the dead. And uh, if he didn't rise from the dead, I'm a false witness. My goodness, look at those verses. How many times have I been a false witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ? We've testified of God that he raised up Christ. But if the dead rise not, then we're false witnesses. I think that scripture teaches us that all these people in the Bible were false witnesses too. Now Paul said, I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And then he was buried. But if that's the end of it, we're false witnesses if we say that he rose from the grave. But Paul goes on to say he was buried and that he rose the third day according to the scriptures. That's what we preach. That he was seen of Cephas, then the twelve. He was seen of 500 brethren at once, Mary, and all those ladies. He walked on this earth for 40 days after he rose from the grave. And he was seen by many, many people, talked to many, many people. And so even history teaches us that we are not false witnesses, that Jesus Christ did rise from the grave. And that's the Savior that I follow this morning. Now verse 15, or 16 and 17. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And Paul goes on to say, the scripture teaches us that 
if there is no resurrection, then Christ hasn't been resurrected. If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, verse 17. You're yet in your sins. Isn't that something to think about? That if there is no resurrection, there's no forgiveness of sin. Did you know that Jesus Christ could have died on the cross a thousand times? But if there's no resurrection, even though he was dying on the cross to pay for our sins, if there's no resurrection, you're still in your sins. What happened to the sins if there was no resurrection? There's no proof that they were paid for. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the very evidence, it's the proof that our sins were paid for. So scripture is teaching us we're yet in our sins if there is no resurrection. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. We're yet in our sins. You see how important the resurrection of Jesus Christ is? It's more important than any other doctrine in the scripture. Yes, he did die on the cross for us, but he had to be resurrected to prove that he did die and that he did pay for our sins. And notice in verse 18, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If there is no resurrection of Christ, not only are we still in our sins, we haven't been forgiven yet, but those that have died before us, those Christians that have went on before us, fell asleep, the Bible says, refers to death as a Christian going to sleep. Those Christians that have died before us are perished. If, if Christ didn't rise from the grave, then Christians are without any hope whatsoever. Notice what he's saying. They're perished. Oh, Christians that died before us if there was no resurrection, if Christ was not resurrected, they're perished. Where are they? They're dead. That means I'll never see my mother again. That would mean I'd never see my father again. That would mean that I'd never see my brothers and sisters again. That would mean that I'd never see all the brothers and sisters in Christ that we've buried in the past. I'll never see all those that have died went to sleep before me if they're perished. If there is no resurrection, they just died and that was the end of it. Stop and think about what the Bible is teaching us says if in this life only we have hope in Christ we're all men most miserable. That word miserable means pitiful. If we receive Christ as our Savior and we trust him for this life only to give us a wonderful life and be able to enjoy him through this life and then we die and that's the end of it, and we have no hope for the forever, for the future, what good is that? Well, we'd be miserable. We'd be pitiful without any hope for eternity. Stop and think what the scripture is teaching us. That word if, if, if. If there is no resurrection, my preaching is foolishness. If there is no resurrection, you're still in your sins. If there is no resurrection, we're false witnesses. We're lying about it. 
If there is no resurrection, you have no hope for the future. If you just can enjoy being with Christ and knowing Christ in this world only, we're pitiful, we're miserable. But notice verse 20, please. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Christ is risen from the dead. Thank God. Thank God. What does the Bible mean when it says he is the first fruits? A lot of people died before Jesus died. But Jesus is the only one who was resurrected from the grave, never to die again because he was God. And as a result of him being God and being resurrected three days after he died, walked on this earth for 40 days and then ascended to heaven, he's the first fruits of the resurrection. That means that our loved ones that have gone on before us, they're with him. They, were re they will be resurrected one day. That means you and I have hope. We'll be resurrected one of these days. Thank God that Jesus did rise from the grave and that he was the first fruit. And because he rose from the grave, that means our sins are forgiven. And we have hope in him, not only in this life, but, for, but forever out there in eternity. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. And he said, I go to prepare a place for you. He told his disciples that before he died. He was telling them, and he assured them several times that he was going to be crucified. He would die. He would give his life. But he was telling them that he's going to be resurrected and he's going to prepare a place for them to live. And that's what he's doing right now. He's receiving everybody into heaven that will receive him as their personal savior here on this earth. I think I'll just stand with the apostle Paul. I think I'll just believe that Jesus rose from the grave and Jesus is in heaven right now. And he's receiving all of his people that fall asleep in him that die and pass on into eternity. My preaching is not vain. It includes the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the only gospel. My faith is not vain. I'm not foolish. I'm not to be pitied. I'm not a false witness. I pity those who can't believe, and I pray for those who can't believe every day that somehow God would speak to them and work in their hearts and lives and they could come to a saving knowledge of Jesus. Oh, folks, this is real. This is the word of God. The gospel is straight from God. Jesus is the son of God. He was born of a virgin. He came into this world and lived that perfect life for 33 and a half years. He's God in the flesh. And then he died on the cross. Why? To pay for our sins. Three days later, he rose from the grave. And he's in heaven right now, preparing a place for us to live with him forever. Please receive him as your personal savior if you never have. And for those of us who have received him, you just keep on hoping in him. You're not to be pitied. You're trusting Jesus Christ and he will take care of you forever. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being here.
sharing this message with your people. And I pray, Father, for anyone who hears this message, if they're not saved, that they would receive you into their heart as their personal Savior. And I pray for all of your people, Lord, that's going through troubling times at this moment. I pray for them that you would enter into every situation and every circumstance and you would meet the needs of our people here at Ellisburg. God help us, I pray, and I'll be careful to give you thanks and praise for hearing and answering prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.